We've long since abdicated a sense of responsibility with regard to our holding the world's reserve currency. 60% of reserves are now in the dollar. And when you look at the spending yeah. by Republicans, by Democrats, um, attempted even more spending by Democrats, and candidly, you know, the Republicans are just as guilty on this subject. You see that the United States no longer considers the impact that ultimately the dollar will have on the rest of the world. It goes its own way. And at the end of the day, that's going to come back to haunt us because with the privilege of having the world's reserve currency goes with it responsibility. The United States is not proving itself to be a responsible steward of the global currency. What I'm saying is they don't really care about the value of the dollar. Okay. So they do care about the reserve currency status, but they are not willing to show the kind of husbandry of the currency that over the long term will allow it to maintain its reserve currency status. So it wants the best of all worlds. It wants to jealously guard right. its reserve currency right. status without having to make any of the sacrifices necessary to be able to give people the long-term confidence. The reason why people gravitate to the dollar, the reason why I have not been a dollar bear right. for the last 10 or 15 years yeah. um, is that we always have to remember that currencies, paper currencies are a relative instrument. So as I said, maybe a decade ago, um, in a world filled with uh, toilet tissue, the dollar is double ply <laughs> and it's proven to be right. Um, so when people get uh, challenged, they then start to look at the dollar versus other currencies. Well, what are we talking about? We're talking about the euro. The euro has fundamental flaws in its spending mechanisms, which may or may not survive another debt crisis, as we saw before. Uh, you don't have a Mario Draghi there who's in a position to say, um, we will do whatever mm -hmm. it takes. Mm -hmm. And everybody mm -hmm. says, whoa, mm -hmm. OK, yeah. we believe him. Yeah. My fear is that one day they will say that, or even the Americans will say that. Someone will say, we will do whatever it takes, and the market will continue taking the euro or the dollar down. And then there's no bottom, because it's all over printed paper. So would you agree that we are about to embark on a huge monetary reset? Ultimately, yes. The, the flavor that is finally adopted um, I can't say, except for one thing, gold will be the ultimate beneficiary. All currencies will be debased against gold for all of the macroeconomic, geopolitical, and speculative forces that have been unleashed over the last decade. Simply put, when I sold our energy company in 2007, um, I had already developed a conviction that I wanted to pivot away from hydrocarbons to precious metals. Again, um, oil was on its way to 100, 120, and uh, gold at the time was 500, 600. And that proved to be the right step. But the basic thinking was I wanted to be in a currency that couldn't be printed at will. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be um, in an asset class that I felt would do fine if the world did well, but may be amongst the only things that does well if things go pear-shaped. And Obviously, we've experienced since that time multiple speculative booms in a variety of other areas. But as an investor, I find that the ability to make money is very much a function of developing a thesis, scrubbing that thesis to the point that you have massive conviction 
finding the right assets that will allow you to benefit from the underlying theme more and more in a jurisdiction that will allow you to keep the fruits of that benefit and then having patience and riding it for as long as it takes and i came to that conviction with gold i came to that conviction with silver and as a consequence i've managed to be able to hold and build positions um and i'm very comfortable with that i'm more comfortable with it now than ever before has there been an opportunity cost in the intervening period <laughs> absolutely except that i have no doubt that um i would have been in over my head because i would have violated the fundamental rule which is don't invest in something unless your conviction will allow you to survive the inevitable downdrafts i don't mean to sound glib but i believe it's a truism that gold will do what you least expect it to do when you least expect it to happen and a very good example of that was during the global financial crisis the price of gold went from around mm -hmm. 680 700 back to 600 yeah. at a time when everybody thought why isn't everyone flooding into gold right and i said look gold is doing what it's meant to do Uh, most of the markets are all ask no bid and gold is allowing people to make a relatively graceful exit when they need liquidity mm -hmm. watch what happens when gold goes back over 700 and it did and then it went to around 800 and then people said well gold should be higher why isn't that at 1000 and then eventually it got to 1000 and why isn't gold higher and then it went to 1800 Usually the big moves in gold are preceded by people saying why isn't it doing what I want it to do now? <laughs> And I'm sorry gold just won't behave that way. Um you can get companies to do that because there are certain things within your control. So you know the kind of news that you'll be issuing to a certain range of buyers. Gold is marching to a different beat, a different drummer. um but when people least expect it gold will go back to 2000 people will say it's been here before it'll go to 2050 people will say it's been here before then it'll go to 2100 and 2150 and people go ooh i'm going to buy it on a pullback then the pullback to 1950 comes and they're scared witless and they don't buy it on the pullback and then it goes back to 23 2400 they're paralyzed etc cetera, etc cetera, until gold goes to what i expect to be the next equilibrium range of between 3 and 5000 once this consolidation period is over and we see that next big move it will happen much faster than people think